Welcome to a special edition of the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Layman. Special YouTube exclusive, Ted. And we're going to try something we've never done before. I don't know how this is about to go, but we're going to try our best, right? That's <laughs> that's gonna, our mentality going into this. It's going to go great. How could it not? Okay, so what we wanted to do, right, the goal line stand during OU Texas this season, like it's it's historic, right? I think it's it's a sequence of plays that a lot of OU fans are going to remember for a long, long time. So we thought, why not use that, those four plays, Right, as an opportunity to educate some OU fans on what Texas was trying to accomplish offensively and how OU didn't let them accomplish it. Right. So I'm going to kind of walk through what's going on offensively. Ted, you are going to bring the defensive perspective. And we're probably going to make fun of Texas a little bit <laughs> because the suitors won the game. So that's that's just how it goes, right? Yeah. And it's called for. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's dive into the first play. So what Texas's offense is trying to accomplish, I, I would just call this concept double lead, double ISO, right? So they've got, they bring Byron Murphy, right? And Tavondre Sweat, their two star D tackles in at the fullback spots. And so how it looks to me, this is what they're trying to accomplish. They're just base blocking across the front, right? So all these offensive linemen are just base blocking the defensive linemen that are on their, that are on their body. And then Byron Murphy is going to run through this a gap and hit whatever color shows. Right. And Tavondre set sweat is going to run through this a gap and hit whatever color shows. It's it's not really a concept you see often, Ted, but it's I mean, it's interesting. That that's for sure. This is not a personnel grouping they had shown as far as I'd seen on tape. They'd brought Byron Murphy in to play fullback, but I'd never seen him in sweat on the field at the same time. So it appears they were they were saving this personnel grouping and this concept for Oklahoma. Which uh Good, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saving it for Oklahoma. Um, so walk us through defensively kind of what, what's going through the mind of some of these guys when they come out in this formation. Yeah. So this is uh, whenever you have the two fullbacks in the, in the formation like that, basically you have to know kind of where you're fitting. Um, so whenever they run this lead play, it should be Canick should be inside 93. Kip Lewis should be outside of 93. So and meaning be, where, where he goes, that's how, that's yep. how they're going to fit it. Or is yep. that just how he inserts? That's how they're supposed to fit it. Yep. That's how they're supposed to fit it. Um, on this specific play, that's how they're supposed to fit it. Um, now some of the difficult things here, like Kip Lewis is playing a really, tough spot kip lewis and billy bowman are playing the hardest spots in this defense because you've got to be super physical against the run that comes your way like you're about to see kip lewis go make a play all the way in there uh where the center is but in pass coverage you've got the first upfield and outbreaking route so even though you've got to make that play inside you've got to cover the tight end if he goes vertical and runs like the seven route to that back pylon you have to cover that, and you can tell just by looking at it, you have horrible leverage. You're inside of it. All he has to do is run away from leverage. Quarterback throws it to the pylon, so it's very difficult. And it's one of the it's you have to have some weaknesses here if you can stop an, a sellout run, there, and, and that's one of the weaknesses. So you always have to keep that in your mind when you're Kip Lewis. So that makes it real tough. And Desamacola, he'll have the first thing to the flat. So. Kip has the first thing upfield. McCola has the first thing to the flat. So that's kind of what you're thinking pass wise. But as far as this goes, it's just straight downhill and you've got to go fast, physical, low and fit on the outside of 93 if you're Kip Lewis and on the inside if you're Canick. And it's the same thing with Stutzman and Bowman on the other side. Right. 
That's so, inside Bowman outside. Gotcha. So when I look at this, I think there are three key blocks in this concept they're trying to accomplish. And it's the interior. It, it's Connor, their left guard on Isaiah Coe. It, it's Robertson, the backup center on Dejon Terry. And it's Campbell here on Jacob Lacey. Like those guys, uh, essentially you're being coached like, Hey, score with your man. Like this is, this is football in its purest form, right? Move the guy across from you against his will. And Ted, let's, let's start taking a look at the play. It's safe to say that is, uh, that's not what happened in the interior. Mm. Stood up immediately at all three spots. I mean, just look how vertical 76 is. I mean, Co jacks him straight up and down. Right. And Dejon Terry just wrestling that center. I mean, you look at what these guys are able to accomplish. You know, th those guys play a huge role in the play. And then obviously Kip Lewis flying in there, getting him around the ankles and getting him down. I mean, that's that's good stuff, man. What what kind of stands out to you about yeah, how it played out? Yeah, it's great by Kip. And you can see, you know, he's he, as soon as he sees it's coming inside, he pulls the trigger right away. And I think that's his best. That's what he's best at is whenever he goes, he goes all out. Uh, and it's a great play. Runs in there. Good job on the inside. Dejan Terry, I thought, ha had his best game, by the way. But he's so strong in there with that backup center. There's no movement. So it just really kills the play. He doesn't ever get any push. So the running back has really nowhere to go. Um, now, Canick. Tough duty, right? Three hundred sixty pounds running ISO right at you. But what do you What do you think, Canick? Going through Canick's head about this moment right here? He's like, I was really hoping this is not the play that they were going to run, but it's <laughs> tough, man. You just got to go low and hard and see how he kind of transitions late. I think he's trying to go to his right shoulder, but he should fit inside of that block on ninety three, and you just got to go and really not try and hit him, just kind of hit that gap and hope you get half of his body and hope that Kip Lewis is there on the other side to kind of take some of the blow away. But, I mean, it's, it's really tough duty, but it's good job. And look at Lacey. Lacey never budges. Uh, Ethan Downs transitioning late on the big first-round tackle. It's good stuff. Good stuff. That is good stuff. All right, looking at the second play. Looking at the second play, Steve Sarkeesian, I got questions, man. <laughs> I, I got a lot of questions. I So, there is there are some very common concepts, right, that you that offenses run down on the goal line. One of one of those common concepts is a concept known as G lead. All right. So this is what it looks like. Your front side guard is going to G pull. Now, first of all, you leave two for the front side G pull and guard and then the fullback, right? So you're leaving these two guys, right? So this is Tavondre Sweat right here. He is down blocking. Now they may try to get a double team, take it all the way to Canick, right? Christian Jones, their right tackle is going to down block here. And then Campbell, their right guard should pull and kick out Desan McCullough, right? The end man on the line of scrimmage. Knock him out as far as you can. Right? Take his inside half and try to absolutely blast him and create an alley for the fullback to insert and lead the running back into the end zone. Right? That is, that's a very common concept on the goal line at the college level, certainly in the NFL. It's just known as G lead, right? That is not what happens here. So, Ted, I, I wanted to run the play first before you break down kind of the defensive mentality with what's going on here. This is, I, I don't know how else to say it. This is a disastrous goal line play offensively <laughs> yes. because the guards pull doesn't make sense. Really, he gets entirely too much depth. The fullback doesn't have any feel, doesn't look like he knows where he's supposed to insert. 
and then they toss it to the running back and he's getting downhill like the pull the fullback inserting and the running back's path none of it matches up right and when you are down on the goal line everything's ha- happens fast man everything and it has to be crisp and it all has to match up. And that's how you score touchdowns from the one and a half yard line. Watch. I mean, what is going on? I mean, you look at the path of the back, you look Campbell's pull. He starts on what they're snapping at the two. He's on nearly the five yard line. I mean, what is he doing? <laughs> no. And then the fullback's like, hey, man, what? I... It almost looks like they didn't practice the play to me. It makes no sense. And I, I just – tell, tell me what you would think defensively because I really don't know what they were trying to accomplish offensively. Well, not to mention, let's not forget that you got who's – everyone says is going to be a first-round tackle on the left, 78. And outside of him, you've got an offensive lineman wearing an eligible number 80. He plays tight end, and he plays uh, offensive line. So you've got a first-rounder and an offensive lineman on the left, and you've got the smallest blocker on the field on the right, your tight end, your true tight end, and a defensive lineman. Um, That's the opposite of where you should be going with the ball. Dude, I am. I'm so glad you brought that up. Tavondre Sweat is a tremendous defensive tackle, right? He he's fantastic. Now he got a little tired. That that tempo got him throughout that game. Yes. There's no doubt about it. But he's got what I believe is the most important block on this play. Right when it, when it comes to creating space. Right. This down block is really important. Right. Because remember, and I think they're trying to run G lead. Maybe it's a pin pull and they're trying to capture the edge, which if they're trying to do that, they should move the fullback over here. He should go from here. He should try to capture the edge. This guard should pull all the way around it and try to clean up color and get this guy playing over the top. That's what it looks like if you're trying to get outside. Right. The, uh, if that's what they were trying to do, that is, it's just a poor play design in, in, in my mind. But back to having a defensive tackle with the most important block on the play. Ted, how much, how many times do you think Tavondre sweat down blocks during practice there in Austin? And you got him going against an absolute savvy vet, right? Mm-hmm. The old man himself. YMCA, the old YMCA guy (laughs) in Bothroyd. And it's an extremely, it's just a really tough spot to put Tavondre Sweat in. And I mean, let's, let's take a look at it. I'm shocked. Bothroyd spins out. Tavondre Sweat falls on the ground because he's a guy that isn't used to down blocking, man. I just, that makes the pat in summary. The pull makes no sense. The fullback doesn't look like he's nowhere he's trying to insert. The running back, the path, like the toss is strange. And you're running it all to a defensive tackle instead of your extra offensive lineman and a guy that was a freshman All-American and a guy that a lot of people are telling me he's the best tackle in the country, even though it's not even close. He's not there yet. I I just I kind of just think it's bad coaching. Yeah. It is. Now, defensively, you know, you're you've got a different formation in in snap 2 here. Traditional eye with the pair over on the right side. And you know, the way that this is covered now is the is on the outside of now the pair and Bothroyd lines up on the outside eye. Now, I think the backer should be kicked over a little bit um, 
Canick should be over Lacey in that area, and Stutzman should be directly over the ball. And the reason Stutzman should be directly over the ball is because there's there's no extra gap over here like there was before. That guy's now directly behind the quarterback. So you are going to be needed on the other side of the ball because if he goes to the right side of the ball, you are fitting inside of number 90. So I'd like to see those guys kicked out, uh, kicked over. Um, now, whenever they snap it and you get the outside track, remember that Kip Lewis still has that because that's the same track if you're running like spider pass or something down on the goal line, that fullbacks goes real flat. So Kip Lewis has to be careful because he's got, remember, he still has that deep seven route by the tight end to the back pylon. So he comes and fits this good. Now, Desan, remember, he's got the first guy to the flat. So you always have to think of everything in a pass sense because the the fit of the play still has to make sense with the coverage. Desan McCola has the first guy to the flat. And 90 is the eligible guy to the flat. So he is outside of 90. He goes right through the middle of his chest there, that, which buckles him. is great on the, on the goal line. But remember, he's got to keep leverage. He can't go inside and spill that because if it's pass, he's lost leverage on the play. So he stones him on the outside. Kip Lewis fits off of the guard who pulled. So he's outside of him. Desan is inside the guard, outside of the fullback. And Kip Lewis is outside of the guard. So they fit that great. Um, now, if you're Canick, your track has to be better, right? You need to mirror the, the path of the fullback. The fullback's wide and he comes straight downhill. But Stutzman, good feel coming over the top and fitting off where he ends up needing to be and good stuff from the interior. And I really like what we get from Bothroyd out here on the edge. He's he really, boxing out like he's the old man at the Y. Yep. Yeah, he's boxing out. And I, I think it's really good. You get good effort from all kinds of guys trying to get there and help. Yeah. One guy I want to point out when I watched it, Jacob Lacey is, is the three technique to the play side. He he's right here. And I just want everyone to watch how he strains and ends up having having an impact on the play, right? Because like he he's one of he's kind of the cavalry that comes cuz the pile looks like it's moving, right? At this point, and he comes and he grabs and he kind of turns it. And that's that's him fighting through that double team, man, and just not giving up and playing with great effort and flying to the ball and just getting into the mix. That's, that's good awesome. stuff, man. Yeah, and not to mention, like, from the very beginning, see, like, he's he is going to be lined up outside eye of the guard, and whenever he gets – he sees that pull right away, and he gets to the outside of the tackle. See that, how he transitions out, and, and he knocks off that – uh, the tight end who's trying to climb to backers. This is great. He sees that this guard is pulling before the snap. There's no doubt. And and that's how he gets his hat to the outside. See his track, how he mirrors that guard? Like, that is excellent. 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 Really good. That's really, really good, man. All right, let's get to the third play. It, it's the same as the first one. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's uh that was an interesting choice for sure so as a refresher they are they're going whether you want to call it double iso uh double lead it is base block base block everyone's base blocking right on the front and then you've got byron murphy he's trying to crush through this a gap same with Fondre sweat right any color that shows uh, i'm guessing kind of that was the coaching point for them and what they didn't anticipate ted was a little angle action from oklahoma's defensive line right in the interior and i don't know if they you know it was an educated guess right but they got in the exact same formation with those two guys and do you think they just said, hey, they ran it to the right the first time. Let's angle our defensive line to our left. 
Well, I think it's that, and I also think it's super high-level coaching because what happened on the first one? Now, we stuffed them, but Canick got blown out of there, right? Because he's taken on a 360-pounder. So when you slant those guys, you can't have a downhill angle anymore whenever you're those fullbacks right because things are going to be moving so you're going to have to come off your line to fit i think bv did it to help out his backers from not having to hit those guys and knows that they won't be able to redirect and think about that that's like this the span of this happening is like hardly any time at all that is quick processing there's there's no doubt so we talked about it when we saw it the first time these three interior blocks are huge in what they're trying to accomplish, right? With how they're trying to insert these fullbacks inside. And I don't really know how else to put it, but left guard and center get absolutely whooped. Hmm. I mean, center centers on the ground, left guard, his guy beats him so – I mean, Co beats him so bad that he eats up the fullback. I mean, man, that is just – that's such good stuff from Dejon Terry and Isaiah Co. Right. I mean, they those two guys, they eat up the guys that are trying to block them and the inserting fullbacks. Yep. It takes four guys to block those two. Four to block two. And I Co gets off here and – that guard is thinking he's just going to have a head up collision and it's, they're going to be on the outside, but he slants and he can't redirect. And how about this? This is team football. Cole beats one 320 pounder and he's got another 320 pounder coming in and hitting him right in the chin. Boom. Hmm. Well, why is he doing that? Cause he's a hell of a teammate. So his Mike backer or will backer actually Danny Stutzman can come make the tackle unblocked. 600 now, pounds on him. That's that's taking one for the team for sure. Now, clearly, angle in the front there was extremely effective. But one thing that cannot be lost on this play, we must acknowledge Mr. Ethan Downs. Right here. Going against Mr. All-World. Kelvin Banks, right? Texas fans were all over me for me saying that Tyler Guyton was the best uh, best offensive lineman coming to that game. And Ted, I believe I believe in the defensive line community, this uh, this is known as shock and shed. <laughs> yeah. Because let's watch it in real speed. See ya. And then let's watch it one more time in slow motion. I mean, just there you go. Hands, face, hands. Yeah. Uh. Which I, that's a big dude. That's a 325 pounder. And he's firing into Ethan Downs, who doesn't give an inch. And he just one arm bench presses that dude off of him. Ethan, whatever Ethan Downs had for breakfast before the Texas game, that dude needs that same routine because he had by far his best game as a Sooner, and it ain't close. Right. So, you've had three plays in the Super Jumbo package that you were saving for Oklahoma. Uh, you've had all three of them fail pretty miserably. So, what do you do? You abandon the Super Jumbo package. You come out in 11 personnel, right? Three wide receivers, one tight end, one running back. And where I want to start with this play is, is the stack alignment and these wide receivers, right? Because I think there's, there's a lot of communication and there's some really good execution from Woody Washington and Billy Bowman right here. So when you get this stack alignment with Worthy and with Whittington, all right, the first thing you're going to see is these is Woody Washington and Billy Bowman, they get on different levels. And Ted, jump in here. You know a lot more about defense than I do. But the reason that they do that is because 
they're going to do what I've always called in and out coverage, right? Woody Washington is going to take whichever these guys goes out, he's going to take them. And whichever guy goes in, Billy Bowman's going to take it. And the last thing you want to do if you're those two guys is be on the same level and pick each other, right? So I am – I, obviously, those are two guys now that have played a lot of football for Oklahoma. But is that is that kind of how you see it, it, in and out? Is that is that what you guys yeah. call it? Well, I, I mean, that's what it is. Everyone calls it something different. But, yeah, and, you know, what, what I think is really interesting here is uh, if, if Xavier Worthy just goes straight to the flat, straight to the pylon right now, Woody Washington has to cover that. And he has to be able to get outside of it because he's the flat player. He can't get outflanked because if he gets beat, it's just an easy throw and catch to the pylon and you're beat on the outside. So you can't get outflanked. If, and if he can't, if he can't get outflanked, then why doesn't he just line up a little wider? Cause he's head up. So why not just give yourself some space and kick over uh, a half a man or a full man over? Well, because he also, if Xavier Worthy runs a hard dive route to the inside, he also has to take Whittington vertical, right? Because Bowman, while he takes the first inside route, like he, the other guy can, they can both go inside. Right. So he has to be in a position where he can still play the vertical route if they have a dive route on the inside. So that, and that alignment is critical right here. I, yeah, that that makes perfect sense. All right, so here's what happens. Now, I think what Texas did here, it is it's the ultimate compliment to a defense. Right? We we tried to bully you three plays in a row. We're going to abandon it. We're going to throw the screen. <laughs> no, I'd love I it it's it's Let's a compliment get back to who we really are. Yeah, and ooh I mean, a lot, a lot to, uh, to break down here, but the, I thought Billy Bowman, like right there, I mean, you're thinking, okay, where are going to score? But for Billy Bowman and McCullough to come and just drill him like that, that was, I mean, that's, that's fantastic ball, Ted. Yeah, go back to the beginning. Okay, so now we w talked about the responsibilities. And the other reason that this alignment is so important and so critical, if remember, if he has that guy to the outside, so he needs to keep leverage, why isn't he wide? He's head up. Because when they run this play, he also gets body right there on Whittington, who's trying to get Billy Bowman, but because he gets body on him, he can't get to Billy Bowman. Now, if he's lined up too wide, what happens? He's got a free shot right up to Billy Bowman. He gets he's able to get pads on him, and they're going to score a touchdown. Right. I want to get your thoughts on this, and I've, I realize I've been I've been pretty uh, critical of some of the play design here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep rolling with that. The block, right, that Whittington has, it's I think it's kind of irrelevant in the concept they're going with. Okay. I think what they're trying to do is create a one-on-one -on -one situation with a wide receiver and a defensive back at the goal line. So let me ask you this, Ted. In this stack alignment. What if I told you I think they threw it to the wrong guy? What if I told you I think Winnington should be the guy in the back of the stack catching the ball? Thicker guy, right? Played really well in this football game, right? The, the block is essentially irrelevant with how fast you're trying to make this thing happen. Mm -hmm. Why throw it to Worthy? Why not throw it to the big, thick Whittington? Right, if uh, Worthy can get in the way, it's you're trying to create the situation of one on one, 
my guy on your guy at the goal line, essentially. They should have thrown it to Whittington. These guys should be flipped in the stack, in my opinion. I, I think that's a great point. He's not the star, though. He was this day. That's, I mean, that just goes, you've got, I mean, you've got a personnel grouping and a play that they run twice. You've got a think a G lead or a pin pull concept on play two that was, I mean, the execution, it just, it was a disaster. And then play four, I, I think you're throwing it to the wrong guy. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from OU's defense. But when we decided we were going to do this, and I really started diving into what they were trying to accomplish offensively, I found myself going, what the, what is going, like, what are they, what are they doing? Yeah. And it's, what are they doing? And they're one of the best offenses in the country. Except for finishing drives. Right, you would think that a team mm. that is really struggling, that is, I think they're like 120th in the country or something, and finishing drives, something, something really bad. You would think if that's something that you're really struggling in, like you would pay extra attention here on the goal line. But as you said, it doesn't look like they ever ran play two. No, you've got. And this oh, one just oh, looks like. Oh, no. Oh, I just noticed this. Look at the sad frat guy in the aviators in the back. Man. Oh, brutal. But you got a fired up BV. The band's playing. Oh, no. Wait, she's surrender, Cobra, but smiling? That's an early surrender. Yeah. I, that's a... not like, that's not the smile. That's like the, I'm so pissed. All I can do is laugh thing, you know? Yeah, this is Billy Bowman going, I'm pretty sure I stopped him short of the goal line. <laughs> and yeah, man, but it was, I mean, it was this close. Yeah. Just go ahead and twist his head off next time right there. <laughs> it, it was that close. Anything else you want to say about an epic goal line stand that I think a lot of OU fans are going to remember for a long, long time? What a job. Awesome. All the way across the board. D-line, getting it done. You're right. They said, we concede the line of scrimmage. We're going to just try and throw it to a star and see what he can do. Not throw it to the right guy, throw it to a star. But that's awesome. That's fight. You had effort plays. You had technique plays. Awesome stuff. My number one takeaway from the football game was that OU is a more physical team. OU out hit Texas. And there is, there's no better example to show that than the four plays we just went through. And I'm so glad that we get to spend the entire next year. Oh, well, I guess they could have a rematch. They're probably going to have a rematch, but still, I love this feeling. It's the best. It's awesome. I hope they keep that same goal line package. I hope they do. Wow. <laughs> All right. That's uh, hopefully this wasn't terrible, but leave us your, leave us comments. Let us know what you think. Also, if you really, really liked it, I think down there somewhere, I think it's down this way. There's something called super thanks where you can, uh, you can show your appreciation for us putting this out, but I, we tried our best, right? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's all you could ask for. We tried our best. We'll see. we'll see how it goes. See if it's well received. Yeah. All right, Ted. See you, man. Later.